Today we've got a crazy entitled parent story about babies and the drama they bring with them. We'll get to that in a bit, but first, Karen parked in my driveway, then claimed the house was hers. So I'm a 14 year old male and my family recently moved into a house in a new estate. The estate had a park that was massive. My house is on the main road of the estate and its garage is on the other side on another road and we're close to the park. About two months ago, they hosted an opening ceremony for the park. A lot of people came. People from the surrounding areas came as well. Me, my brother, and my parents left our house and walked down to the park. Due to all the traffic there, there were people there to manage it. Once we get there, we see a car parked in our driveway. My dad's a calm dude usually, but he doesn't like stuff like this. Me and my brother, 18 years old, go up to one of the workers and tell him that the car in there wasn't ours and we don't want it there. The worker tells us he saw the people parked there and kind of remembers what they look like. We tell him that it would be good if we get the car moved. He says he'll try to find her. About 20 minutes later, we see him walking up to the car with a lady and her son who looked to be about 9. She walks up there and we see her starting to get angry. Naturally, we walk up to see what's happening. This is the conversation that happened. Not 100% accurate, it's been a while. Karen says, I don't understand why you want me to move my car. I live here. The worker says, well, they say that you don't, and I don't see why they would bring this issue here unless it was true. Karen says, they're clearly lying. I live here. My brother said, ma'am, please. I live here, and I even have keys to the house. Please move your car. Karen says, BS, complete BS, I've lived here for a year and watched this park get built. Our house was finished five months prior to this. My brother said, okay then, what two cars are inside the garage then? Karen says, a Volkswagen and a Mazda. My brother says, nope, a VW Jetta and a Hyundai i45. Karen says, that's not true, I'll open the garage and show you. As she scuffles through her handbag, my brother opens the garage. My brother says, there, that's the evidence. Closes the garage and the worker says, It's not your house, Karen, so please leave. She gets in the car and leaves while looking very angry. We didn't think to call the cops because nothing major happened, but it was funny to see her lying out of her butt and getting proven wrong. Now, while I've heard plenty of stories of Karens here trying to assert that they deserve to be somewhere or they're privileged to an area, this is kind of up there as far as bold, sheer confidence to just claim that this is hers and she meant to be there. I mean, willingly just guessing the two types of cars when they know they're in over their head at that point? That's pretty impressive that they had the balls to even gamble like that. Even feign that they have the garage opener in their purse somehow. Our next story is, Entitled Parent Threatens to Never Come Back to This Establishment. So, I wasn't involved in this conversation, but it was at a table next to me at a nice restaurant in New York City. One of my favorite places, but I'm not sure if I'm allowed to name it. Anyhow, my dad and I were at a table for two when they seated an entitled mother and her kid next to us. The kid was fine. Actually, I don't think he said a single word the whole time we were seated next to them. It was listening to the entitled mother that got me. Also, I've never seen so much Ralph Lauren in my life between the two of them, if this adds to why she was obviously entitled. The waiter comes over and asks to take their order. The entitled mother says, Last time we were here, you had, insert item no longer on the menu. The waiter apologizes and very politely explains that their menu is seasonal and changes every quarter, so that item, being out of season, is not on it. Entitled mother says, That's okay. Just go to the kitchen and have them make it. The waiter explains that he can't because they don't even have the ingredients because they're seasonal and this isn't the season for them. Entitled mother, obviously undaunted by this, suggests that the restaurant have someone run over to the store and pick up the ingredients. The waiter lets her know that that will not be happening. Very politely though, this guy deserves an award. Entitled mother says something about how she won't be back if they can't make what she wants. I'd like to think the waiter died a little inside when he heard this. No, I don't. He was probably thrilled. Considering how famous the place is, I'm going to guess she'll be back. Anyway, that's the story. I just thought it a bit amusing. I just never understand what people who say, I'll never be back here, think the other person is going to think. If they lose one customer, if they lose five customers because you tell all your family members, 
this very famous restaurant is not going to be hurting losing your business. They're going to say, thank God you're never coming back here. Good riddance. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you can't get enough of hearing about these entitled parents, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is, Entitled Dad Shocked at Breastfeeding I was with my little baby with a checkup visit in a children's polyclinic. There's a nursing home with two comfy chairs. It's a long, narrow room arranged like this. Door, changing table, screen, chair number one, another screen, chair number two, window. I come in, the chair closer to the door is empty, another one is occupied. I sit down and start nursing. Mom from the chair number two soon leaves. In comes another woman with a baby and her husband. He enters first, passes the first screen, sees me mid-process. I'm not giving a freak. He turns around without a word, not even checking the second chair and walks his wife out the door. And as he closes it, I hear him saying loudly, did you see that? She didn't even put away her boob. I get it, supportive husband follows his wife and kid to the doctors and stuff. But did he really enter a nursing room and expect women in there to hide their breasts to not disturb him? I bet this guy almost half expected walking into this children's nursing room, maybe they thought they were going to find a nurse in there. I mean, to be fair, as a male that sometimes has their moments, if I was supporting my wife and I went into a place like this and I saw a nursing room, I might not immediately get the term nursing meaning breastfeeding, so I mean it's possible. Our next story is, am I right for hating my mother? So I hate my mother, and I don't think that I'm overreacting, but I'd like to know other people's opinions after they read this. My mother has always hated me and viewed me as, in her words, a disappointment, disaster, destroyer, etc. I don't understand how a four-year-old can be all those things, but okay. She married my father in college because he was an up-and-coming lawyer and she wanted money in class. Then, she immediately got pregnant with me to lock it in. Though she hardly raised me and would usually leave me with a nanny, when my father was home, he would essentially be both a father and a mother to me. Then when I was five, I caught her sleeping with my father's best friend. She told my father, and he was willing to work it out. He was infatuated, but she refused. She then immediately married him, my stepfather. The reason they got married and slept together was because my stepfather's wife had just passed away. And since my mother was her best friend, she tried to console him. It ended with them sleeping together, and afterward she told him she was pregnant when she wasn't so that he would marry her, then immediately miscarried. I also have a stepsister that my mother severely favors over me, and when we were teenagers, she turned us against each other for years. My sister had this boyfriend in high school, they were perfect, and my mother loved him. Anyway, one night I get into a fight with my mother, and when that happens, I become a completely different person, and I decided to go to a party and get belligerently drunk. At the party, I saw my sister's boyfriend. He started flirting with me, and I started flirting back. He then started saying something along the lines of, what would your mother think? And that gave me the idea to sleep with him to piss my mother and sister off. I was completely wrong and regret it. After he offered to leave my sister for me, I declined once I came to my senses. That got the dude angry and a couple of days later, he lied and told my sister I seduced him. We fought and I tried to apologize for over a month because I knew it was completely my fault. And at that point, I thought I'd apologized as much as I could. My mother told me my sister needs some time alone and convinced me to move across the country to live with my father to give her some space. For two years, I tried calling and writing to my sister but never got a response. My sister also tried contacting me, but my mother just changed all the phone numbers and kept all my letters and would tell my sister I hate her, that I don't want to reconcile because she was trying to manipulate my sister into eventually marrying her high school boyfriend by telling her that that's what her deceased mother would have wanted since he had no money, and if I were in her life, I would try to convince her not to. This is just some of the worst things she's done as an example. This lady honestly sounds like a bit of a monster, and I want to hear more about what happened with OP and their sister once they realized what went down. 
I think there's a whole second half to the story that's full of juicy info that we kind of missed out on. But the fact remains, this lady is straight up vile. Our next story is, Dad makes a big deal out of everything I wear. I, 17 year old female, can't find any other communities that allow text posts, but basically, every time I pick out what I wear, I'm worried that my dad will have an issue with it if it's not a full length shirt and pants. If I wear a shirt that shows my belly, I'm showing my midsection. I can't wear sports bras at home in my own house, even though everyone I live with is related to me. For Christmas this past year, my mom got me black leggings and my dad decided I couldn't wear them in public because my stepmother decided that they're the viral TikTok leggings that are supposed to make your butt look big. Which is obviously not true, as no leggings can just magically make your butt larger. In the past, my dad's had an issue with me wearing certain dresses because he claims they're too short. So, for my birthday, I put exercise shorts under my dress. The kind you'd wear at the gym or to run and my stepmother still tried to make a big deal out of it and say it was too short, even after I said that I'd put shorts under the dress, so there wasn't a risk of anyone seeing my underwear. I constantly feel objectified in my own home, and it's ridiculous. Maybe if someone's looking at the boobs or butt of an underage girl, they are the issue, and to remind everyone, pervs will still be pervs, no matter how skimpy or conservative someone dresses. Every time I wear shorts, they're too short. And if I wear a shirt that is a v-neck, it's too low cut. One time at a party I was wearing a dress that my dad had bought me, and my stepmother had decided to pull my dress down, but she pulled it down too far and it exposed my bra, not the strap but the literal cup. That's not okay. Luckily I don't think anyone saw, but it just goes to show how parents will fixate on something that doesn't really matter and then it does exactly what they were claiming they were trying to prevent. I really don't know what OP can do because they very clearly have their own approved wardrobe in mind. I would just say that OP should go to them and say basically, either sooner or later you're gonna have to accept me dressing how I wanna dress, and especially saying the fact that whether they personally believe it or not, what OP's choosing to wear is extremely, extremely normal for anybody their age to wear. It's not too exposed. It's not too inappropriate. I would just say they can continue to have their beliefs and they can continue trying to push for whatever they want. But at some point, they've got to accept you want to dress how you want to dress. And it's not even inappropriate to begin with. This next story is... Entitled mother keeps trying to take over my birthday, so I called it off. Currently my, trans male 15, mom is mad that I don't want to celebrate my birthday. My birthday is in a month and I'll be 16. I hate my birthday. Every single birth I've had since I was in kindergarten was a disaster. I'm not saying that to be dramatic. It's all been a disaster. I remember I was in kindergarten and I had a birthday on the beach. We were late to my own party. My mom had gotten into two fights with random people, causing the cops to settle everything. Once we actually went to the party, I found no one showed up, not even my friends. I had no presents and my cake was destroyed. It also rained on that day. Ever since then, my birthdays haven't really been the best. From someone destroying my presents, to my parents forgetting my birthday, and putting something together quickly, it's all been a horrible fail. At age 10, I eventually gave up trying to find any sort of happiness about my birthday. Eventually, my birthday became a day my family bought gifts they wanted for themselves, for me. Then they'd take the gift so they could have it. Then the adults would get drunk and I was forced to blow out a cake that 9 out of 10 times I didn't even want or even pick out. Needless to say, I'm not too thrilled about my birthday coming up. My mom is though. She keeps talking about it and trying to get me to plan my day, but my ideas all sound boring and dull. She wants my party to happen at a gun range so I can shoot some guns and we can go out and buy things and I'll wear a big dress, etc. All that stuff. She wants it to end with us at her favorite restaurant and they all wish me a happy birthday. I obviously don't want that. I want to stay home alone and maybe if I'm lucky get two gifts I've always wanted which is a cheap $20 tablet and a digital art pen so I can draw easier. 
I do digital art on my phone, love it, but it's hard still. If I'm really lucky, I want a fake criminal file thingy where you get a fake murder case to solve. It looks really fun and I'd love to do that alone by myself at night with my phone playing horror movies. Nothing too big and expensive, but apparently that's dull. She uses the, you'll only be 16 once, you know, you gotta celebrate it big. I hate big parties. They scare me and imagine all those people trying to talk and hug me. Ew, my worst nightmare. I eventually got tired of trying to at least come to meet in the middle and just said, I'm not gonna celebrate my birthday. I just don't want to do anything this year. I'm too tired anyways. There's next year though. She got upset and said, I'm taking this from her and it's her biggest thing she's been waiting for, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to have to bargain for my own birthday. It's never been about me. What will be so different this year? I won't even have my friends since my mom took my friends away from me. So my original plan is out the window. I was planning to hang out with my friends all day. Now she's upset and I honestly can't even anymore. She's acting like a child and I'm a child. The most important thing she said is, you're taking this away from me. You're taking your birthday celebration away from me. This isn't even about you, this isn't about your birthday, it's about them making a plan and a party that they think will be fun. Never once took into account anything you might care or think about it. That just straight up sucks. Our next story is, my dad leaves his pee and stuff all over the bathroom and I can't stand it. I swear to God, my dad gets on every last nerve of mine the way he acts like just because he pays for this house, nobody else lives here. My father, a grown butt man by the way, has been leaving the toilet unflushed, pee all over the toilet seat, and pee in the shower for as long as I've been alive and I'm sick of it. I told my mom to talk to him about it because if I did I'd be disrespectful. He then blatantly lied about it, saying it wasn't him and blamed it on my brother, when everyone in the house knows it's my dad. Today, he called me into the living room to shift the blame onto me by accusing me of leaving used menstrual pads and blood on the floor, when he himself is aware that's not true. I've never heard a testimony from my family members complaining either. He also said that even when he lifts the seat, which is so simple yet so hard, We still complain that he leaves the toilet seat up, but literally no one ever said that. My mom and I were so confused. He was just making up crap to deflect from the original argument because he couldn't justify his lack of respect for the other people who live here. He also brought up irrelevant points, saying that I should just use the upstairs bathroom because my room was originally my brother's room, as if that means my brother should be dealing with a nasty butt bathroom instead. Arguing with him is useless. I want to move out so freaking bad. I would honestly, every time you start encountering this stuff, maybe take a picture, maybe start a family group chat and send a picture of that to the family group chat. Maybe even include mention of possibly sending it to some more people that might matter to him. If your grandparents are still around, maybe they deserve to know how their son's treating their stuff. Do they have any siblings? Might be fun to send them a quirky picture about how your father lives his life. I think it has to go outside the family for it to actually start kicking in to some degree because I feel like they're just too comfortable and complacent with their control over the family. Our next story is so much drama. Babies bring out the worst in in in-laws. Some backstory before I share the text messages that really make this great. This officially started because my grandmother-in-law really, really wanted to see my newborn son. My grandmother-in-law over the years has started to show signs of what I believe is dementia and doesn't make the best judgments. I've also realized she can be emotionally manipulative and has been way before she started to show signs of not completely being there. I won't go into too much detail about this, just trust me when I say she's overall not a great person, but still, she's my husband's grandmother and I would have never done anything to upset her. Now, after about two months, my grandmother-in-law has really been pushing to see my son. Both me and my husband were hesitant about this because she's been very sick recently. On top of that, she has a history of being sick but not telling anyone that she is until after the fact. For example, a family gathering. When I was hella pregnant, we were invited to Thanksgiving at their house. 
and I declined to go because I was getting induced the next week, and if I got sick, they would have pushed it back further. My grandmother-in-law promised she was fine, but I didn't feel comfortable with it and stayed home. Not even two days later, she told mother-in-law she was very sick and wasn't even feeling great, even at Thanksgiving. All relevant to why I didn't want her to see my son yet, as we're still deep in RSV season and he had just gotten his first round of vaccines. However, much, much, much pushing and guilt tripping from both her, mother-in-law and sister-in-law, we decided that she could meet our son at our house. Just a little detail, we live with my grandmother and she helps me so much with my son, honestly the most amazing woman ever. We decided if grandmother-in-law was going to come over, we were going to set boundaries to make sure our son was safe and have our own peace of mind. The boundaries were that we weren't comfortable with grandmother-in-law holding son, but would love for her to finally be able to see him. I specify this because some people see it was wrong that we would exclude her from holding son, but we specified this to everyone before she came over and grandmother-in-law agreed with it. Remember, she has continuously been sick and won't tell anyone she is and when it comes time to see son, no way in heck was she going to cancel if she felt ill. On top of this, we said she needed to wear a mask and take a COVID test beforehand. The day that she came over, we received a text from mother-in-law that she was also coming with my grandmother-in-law and asked what time they should arrive. Mother-in-law has been to our house a few times, so it wasn't a huge deal but I realize now it wasn't the best idea. They walk in, and grandmother-in-law shows my grandmother the COVID test, not us, but whatever, and proceeds to stuff the mask she was holding back into her purse. At this point, I'm kind of over it, but I just smile and talk to her for a little bit before going back to the kitchen while my husband took the dog outside to use the bathroom. When I was out of hearing range, or so she thought, she asked my grandmother to hold son. My grandmother turned to me in the kitchen and repeated the question, and I simply stated, Would you mind asking husband when he gets back? I figured since it's husband's grandmother-in-law, it would be a lot gentler if he lets her down. Instead, grandmother-in-law started crying, no actual tears, and exclaimed, Why does no one like me? Remember what I said about emotionally manipulative? Yeah, I was uncomfortable. My grandmother was uncomfortable. Our poor other dog in the kitchen with me was uncomfortable. I excused myself to go start laundry after checking with my grandmother. She was okay holding son for another minute before my husband came back in. Immediately when I left the room, again, my mistake, my mother-in-law walks over, takes son from my grandmother, and puts him on my grandmother-in-law's lap. Before this, Son was smiling and laughing while my grandmother held him, but faced him toward grandmother-in-law. My son lost it and started screaming. My husband walks in at this point, sees Son on grandmother-in-law's lap, and immediately grabbed him from grandmother-in-law and went into the kitchen. My mother-in-law was shocked and made a snide comment of, Oh, so no one gets to him, Son, today. Then they both left soon after, and my grandmother apologized profusely for the situation when I found out. It definitely wasn't her fault at all. Now comes the real dramatic part. Three weeks after what I will now call the incident, my mother-in-law has been calling husband, and we explained to her that we were upset with what happened. She didn't grasp what she did wrong, and the conversation ultimately went nowhere. Another week and more calls. Here's where the text messages come into the story. Husband and mother-in-law said, Hey, I want you to know I'm not ignoring you, but I'm still not over what happened. We want you to be a part of ours and son's life, but because of the boundaries you broke, we don't feel comfortable having you over for a while. Next week, sister-in-law to husband said, Want to do dinner at mom's on Saturday if you all aren't busy? I want to see son. Husband said no. Mom still hasn't even tried to talk to us after her and Nana came here. The next day, sister-in-law to husband said, Hey, what's the deal with mom and Nana? Something's been off since that day they came over there. Y'all have been distant. I just want to know what's going on. Husband said, I already talked to mom, but me and OP decided that we aren't comfortable with mom coming over for a while because she broke boundaries. It's important to us because we did discuss beforehand what we expected and son's health is more important than anything. Sister-in-law replied, Oh, okay, but... 
What boundaries were broken? I'm confused. She wasn't sick or anything. She'd been around Sun before that day they went over there. What happened specifically that day that made y'all feel uncomfortable? Other than Nana not wearing a mask. Husband replied, We already told mom about it. Don't worry. Next day, side note, my postpartum depression has gotten extremely bad and in-laws were starting to be a little much on Facebook so I took them off. Sister-in-law to husband said, Why did OP unfriend me and mom on Facebook? Stepdad just called and said mom's bawling her eyes out over this whole situation. I don't know what the deal is, but I hope you realize what y'all are doing to the family. I'm not trying to be in the middle of anything, but mom and Nana feel like they can't talk to you or OP. What's the deal? This crap can't go on forever. Y'all need to work it out. Husband said, Like I said before, we already talked to mom about it. You said you weren't going to choose sides, and it seems you already have. Please stay out of it. OP unadded everyone because she has way too much going on and doesn't want to be in the drama. We never said mom wouldn't see son again, but we still need time. Son is our son, and mom and Nana broke a boundary that we set even before son was born. Even if someone in OP's family did the same thing, it would be the same outcome. We were hesitant about Nana coming over at all because of exactly what just happened. Next day, and after a phone call with sister-in-law where sister-in-law said OP was causing all the drama, husband to sister-in-law said, After that conversation, me and OP have talked and decided we feel you need to completely stay out of everything going on. We understand that you're trying to defend mom and be a messenger, but you have more than likely have unknowingly taken her side in this when there is no side. We are son's parents and we get to decide who does and doesn't see him. We aren't going to keep going in circles on what boundaries are because we have already stated multiple times what they were. What matters now is that mom and now you can't respect it. We need time to just move on from the situation. No one is trying to start drama, but by dragging more people into this, like dad, you are in fact causing drama and we don't appreciate it. In case you forgot, we were very hesitant on Nana seeing Sun for the very reasons that happened. Not only did Nana ask to hold Sun when both OP and I left the room, but mom then took it in her own hands to hand son to Nana. We already stated we were concerned for our son getting sick and weren't comfortable with her holding him, but that wasn't good enough for them. Son is not a toy. We aren't mad at them, but the situation, but you have nothing to do with it. It doesn't matter that you're the messenger. You can still come see son whenever you want, but we need time away from mom and to process the situation. Sister-in-law replied, lol, okay. In case you're wondering, yes, sister-in-law did kind of come out of left field. I received comments that we shouldn't have just let this continue and just ignored sister-in-law, but we genuinely wanted her to just understand why we were upset and we would really like her to not get involved. I was starting to feel like maybe I was just a witch and posted the text messages, names hidden of course, to a Facebook group called Monster-in-Laws. Not even a few hours later, I received a text from sister-in-law with screenshots of the post and three question marks. I have no freaking clue how she found the post as she's blocked on my Facebook, but she did. I felt very, very uncomfortable with her just happening upon my post. Or if someone on a group of thousands of people recognized the story and sent it to sister-in-law, really not a huge fan of that. When I ignored her text, she sent the screenshots to my husband. Here's what followed. Husband said to sister-in-law, Can you mind your own darn business? You've done nothing but stir the pot. OP has had nothing but problems since son was born, and honestly the last thing she needs is this. I don't know what kind of resentment you harbor toward her, or why you even do, but you've hated her since we got married. Guess what, you're gonna have to deal with it. OP and son are my family now, and they come before anything. I won't let you or anybody act this way towards us. Decide if this is worth having a semblance of a relationship with us. I don't give a crap at this point because honestly, I have zero interest in ever talking to you again. Sister-in-law replied, I haven't done anything. I've just been the messenger in this whole situation. If that's what you want, then fine. Shows OP's true character. I forgave OP for what she did to you. She's always assumed I've had it out for her, but I haven't. You don't understand how much you've affected and hurt our family. OP caused all of this. 
I wasn't the one asking to see son. I was sticking up for mom and Nana. They felt like they couldn't say anything to you because they didn't want to upset you. I chose to be the messenger in this whole situation because I actually care and love my family. You've done irreversible emotional damage to mom and Nana and now me. I hope you'll realize that and I wasn't the one starting drama. If you don't ever want to talk to me again then fine, so be it. Don't come back around later saying I told you so. I've done nothing but try to be nice and accepting towards OP and all I get is this. But if that's the life y'all chose to live then go ahead. OP's never liked me or mom or any of our family for that matter and it's sad it's coming to picking sides. Don't call me a pot stirrer because I've done nothing wrong. I've only told the truth. Sometimes the truth hurts. Getting mad and unfriending me and blocking me also doesn't solve anything. Tell me where I've gone wrong in this situation, please. I was only looking out for mom and Nana because it hurts me to see them so upset. This is not guilt tripping you, this is just the honest truth. I haven't done anything wrong, yet I'm causing drama because I'm the only one not afraid to shoot you straight. Husband to sister-in-law said, I'm taking my wife's side. Sister-in-law replied, like I said, it's sad you feel like you have to pick a side. We're adults and y'all are married. When you get married, you don't pick sides. Am I wrong? Please tell me what I did wrong. Honestly, this could have been over with the first text to mother-in-law. Husband and I just needed a week or two to feel comfortable having them over again, and instead sister-in-law made it worse. This is one of those sad situations where they just don't realize that they continue to shovel more dirt right over their head and continue to bury themselves. It's like a basic cool down. They want just a week or two to kind of let it go and de-stress and be ready for another engagement with them. And meanwhile, sister-in-law and the rest of them continue to just pound the reset button hoping that, well, if I just send another text, they'll just get over it somehow. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely crazy entitled parent story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.